Yeah, I'm Peter Sesselman uh, and I'm the maker of the, uh, the packing stompa and the classic uh, wood stompa and a whole range of other uh, stomp boxes and guitar pickups and DIY products. And one question that keeps coming up uh, all the time when I'm uh, manufacturing these stomp boxes and pickups is what kind of amp do you use to get the maximum sound out of your acoustic guitar and also out of your, um, your stomp box? Now, this is not as easy as it sounds, because if you don't have a, a huge PA with big 18-inch uh, woofers and stuff like that, you're not going to get a really satisfactory sound. If you're just running around with a little acoustic guitar amp or, or an electric guitar amp or something like that, there really isn't any bass in them, because they're open-back amps and, and they're not designed to, to reproduce the kind of bass that the, uh, a good stomp box will produce. So what do you do? Well, either get a huge PA and drag it with you everywhere you go, which is okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, or you have to use a subwoofer. Um, and you can, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can even build your own amp uh, using a subwoofer as the, as the basis for it. And I'll show you that a bit later on in this video. But first of all, um, you have to look at uh, what kind of sub you're going to use. Now I have here just an old home theater style sub. It's nothing fancy, it's about 100 watt. Got a 10 inch driver in it and, a, and an vented cabinet. Um, this basically looks like this. Put the front cover off. So here you've got a, a speaker, and there is just the, the vent. And then at the back of it, it looks like this. Now, some of you will already be familiar with what this looks like at the back. You have um, speaker inputs, and you also have line inputs. And then you have a volume, and you have a frequency control, which kind of basically works the bass frequencies and how much mids and, and lows there are in the mix. And of course you've got power in and power pump and things like that. Now, there's a couple of things you can do. One is to, to take the um, piggyback the speaker out on your amp. Uh, don't disconnect it from your amp because then you would lose the, the sound of the amp. So you need to somewhere or another create a little plug that piggybacks the signal. Or if your amp has an auxiliary out, you can then just run that into the line input. Or as I said, you can piggyback the speaker input and run that into the speakers. And then run this alongside your amp and it'll just fatten out that bottom end. Now you can test you can test this to see what kind of bass response they have by actually plugging your stomp box straight into the back of them. You don't need a, a preamp or a mixer or anything. But you, you may need a, a, um, an RCA to RCA cable with a jack extension on it so you can plug your stomp box in and plug that into the line in at the back of the, of the subwoofer. I'm just going to turn this around to the power cable reaches. You plug, plug the power in, turn the unit on, and um, tap away. So you can hear, yeah, there's a nice low bass in there. I'm not sure how much you'll pick up through the microphone on the camera, but trust me, that is a, that is a nice, solid, low bass. The kind of sound that you want from your stomp box. So this unit will do the job quite nicely in a smaller environment. I wouldn't use this in a concert hall, but in a small restaurant or just for jamming at home and things like that it'll deliver the, the goods, no worries at all. So, I'm going to turn this off again. As I said, you have two options, you know, you can hook this alongside your guitar amp and just run it as a, as a secondary uh, unit next to your amp, just to give that bottom end bass. You can run it on its own, just plug your stomp box in the back and have that as a stomp box amp and then have your guitar amp next to it. Or, with some minor modifications to the stomp box, uh, to the, sorry, with some minor modifications to the subwoofer itself, you can actually turn this into a pretty decent guitar amp. And I mean an acoustic guitar amp, not an electric one. Because they have a, they have a 100 watt amplifier built in, decent power supply, they have a good bass response. Don't have much treble, but that's where we put a tweeter in. So I have, here I've got an old piezo tweeter, okay, which I'm going to put in the front here and I'm going to put the vent at the back. I'm going to drill a hole at the back to put that vent in and I'm going to put the tweeter there. And I'm actually going to turn the whole unit upside down so the tweeter is on top. I'm going to take the silly little legs off and I'm going to put some solid rubber or, or felt legs on it. I'm going to put a carry handle on the side because I like to sit on this sometimes when I sit and play and the carry handle isn't very comfortable to sit on. So the carry handle on the side. I'm going to bypass the preamp inside the unit, the one that um, only filters out the bass frequencies. So I'm getting the full range of frequencies, right down from the low bass to the high treble. And then I'm going to use my 
little mixer that I use for everything and run that into the back. So I'm going to use the preamp in the mixer. I'm going to use this purely as a power amp, sub and tweeter. Uh, so it'll become like a miniature PA in a sense. And it works really well. So bear with me and I'm going to show you step by step how to turn this into an acoustic guitar amplifier and stomp box amplifier. Okay, so the process to turn this into a uh, acoustic guitar amp is relatively simple, but you do need a little bit of electronic knowledge. And when I say a little bit, I mean like you need to know the difference between plus and minus, and power and audio, and the difference between a, a speaker and a microphone. So you don't have to be an electronics engineer, but you do need to know the basic basics, like unplug something before you stick your fingers in it. Um, so you will require a soldering iron, you will need some solder, you will need a tweeter of some description, this is a piezo tweeter. Uh, if you get a dome tweeter or something like that you will also need a um, little capacitor to work as a crossover filter. Uh, but uh, anybody at an electronic store can easily advise you on what values to use and things like that. So I don't need to harp on about that. Need a bit of cable, um, you will need a screwdriver and a few bits and pieces. A multimeter wouldn't go astray, these are not expensive, you can pick them up for $20 if you don't have one. If you're a musician and you don't have a multimeter, you probably should invest in one. And a soldering iron. If you're a musician and you don't have a soldering iron, I think that's something you should seriously consider getting. Um, so, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, to turn the unit upside down. Now, the, the other thing you're going to need, so I'm just going to do my bits here, is you're going to need, and that's hiding underneath, you're going to need a jack plug. That's for your, uh, your input from your mixer. And you can put a, a volume pot in if you want to. You don't need to because your mixer will have all that in it. This is just working as a power amp. Um, but sometimes it's handy to have a volume control so you can turn it down a little bit to stop noise and stuff like that. So this is just a straightforward um, 100k log. Alpha log. Again, about any electronic store, they're a couple of bucks, no big deal, nothing special. Uh, standard jack plug, same story. Don't get the cheapest one, get something which has got a little bit of metal in it. So the first thing I'm going to do, turn it upside down, because I want that tweeter on top. So I have some, um, I'm just going to do this very simply. I've got some felt pads here that I picked up from a um, hardware store a long time ago. So we'll try and get this packet open in somewhere. It's probably going to be the hardest part of the whole process is getting this packet open. Not too bad. So here's got some little little felt buttons. Tear those off. I've got glue on the back. I don't know how many I'm going to put on. Maybe maybe just one in each corner for now. You can, you can put on whatever you want. And some rubber buttons probably wouldn't hurt because they are from, from a non-slip point of view. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to put one little felt pad in each corner. Um, since this video is not actually about how to put the legs on the map. So. Just bear with me while I do this. Then I'm simply going to turn the unit upside down. Or in this case, this will not be the top, so it's the right way around, I suppose. These silly little legs here are pretty useless, really. So I'm just going to take those off like that. So, now it looks like this. Got the, the hole on top there. Now, um, I'm going to, you could do this from the back, but it's actually easier to do it from the front. So I'm going to take the, the screws out of the, the speaker and take that up just so I can get to the cables at the back and then put the tweeter in. So um, this particular unit has the speaker attached with Allen keys. Um, I've already taken some of the screws out to save a bit of time. Here. 
I'm going to bring the camera up closer so you can see. So, if you look here now, you can see that the actual woofer is out. It's just basically left the big hole here. You can even see the circuit board and the amp at the back inside there. Uh, but I'll take that out through the back afterwards. And then it's got this vent here. Now, a subwoofer does need to have a vent in it. So, when I put the tweeter in here, I'll need to put the vent somewhere else. Now, there's not a lot of room here, so I'm going to put this at the back. Uh, you can have the vent at the back. It doesn't make a big difference for the sound. So, I'm going to... Is that usually just glued in or pushed in? So let me see if I can just simply <coughs> yank that out. It's a little little tube comes out, which just basically leaves a hole that we will insert our tweeter in. Now this is an old donkey tweeter, but now you want to make sure that this is fairly fairly airproof um, around the outside. So this has already got some gunk on it, but I'm going to need some more gunk in order to, to make sure it's sealed, so I'm going to use Bluetech. Works fine. Again, available in every every office store, every hardware store. And it, um, I, I use this product for quite a lot of things. I use it in my pickups and it's, it's just a, a good multi-purpose tack and, um, and sealer and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to put a nice little sausage of that all the way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. So, um, now I got this kind of blue tacky rubber sausage on the outside, which is I'm gonna screw that tweeter in. Now, before I screw the tweeter in, I'm gonna solder the the cables on because that's a bit tricky to do afterwards. Now, I got my um, my speaker cable here. I'm just going to separate the two two wires like that. I'm going to strip the end. Just going to strip the end. You can do that with the knife or scissors or whatever you can get your hands on. Just like that. Try not to make a hole inside of your amp while you're doing it. I, I like to twist the end of the cords a little bit. Now on here there should be a plus and a minus. So that's plus the cable with a stripe on it goes to plus. It's not as if there's a difference in the cable, it's just that that's convention and keeps it easier for you. And minus. And I'm going to solder that on. Now with the use of our soldering iron here, I'm going to heat up the little connectors here. I'm going to apply the, the solder and make sure the solder, you can see it flowing and melting nicely around the connectors. Good soldering skills are handy to have. Um, as a musician you can make your own cables, you can repair your own cables. You can do a lot of on-the-spot repair work and things like that. Um, which is um, fairly essential I think for a musician. Anyway, it's just my opinion. So that's now soldered on there, fine. So we're then going to, I'm going to move this back a little bit again, get the camera up, back up like this. So I'm now going to put this into the box, again relatively straightforward. I've got my nice little blue tacky substance there, I'm going to squeeze that in as well as I can. And I also have four little screws here. Blue tack isn't enough on its own, so I'm gonna just put some screws in. Nicely squished in. You can remove the extra blue tack if you want to. Just pull that off and clean it up. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Then we're going to solder this onto the back of the speaker. As I said, if you 
if you're using a dome tweet or anything like that, you'll need a little capacitor in between. But this is a, this is a piezo, so it doesn't need that. Again, strip the ends of your cable. Check, check the cables which are already on it. They, they may be suffering a little bit and could probably do with a bit of sprucing up maybe. This is a good time to make sure that all the connections are working well. So, again, with the solder. Now the, the cable with the line on it, the plus, that goes to the red. So, let's put that down there. Solder and the soldering iron. Melt that on there. And the other one, which is the negative polarity. It's on this side. I think it's worth pointing out, and I'm not sure if I did it earlier on the video, this is not live at the moment, I have unplugged the unit from the power point. Whenever you do anything, unplug it from the power point. Good message. So I'm going to put the speaker back in. Okay, put all the screws in. So, so this particular unit uses Allen keys, just depends on the manufacturer. Now when it comes to selecting your, your sub, pick, some, pick something decent, don't, don't pick the cheapest uh, little plastic thing you can find with a one inch speaker and you're not going to get any joy out of it. This unit wasn't expensive, you can pick them up in any electronic store, any television store, home theatre store. You may be lucky and find a discontinued model or something with a bit of a scratch on it or something like that. And um, yeah, I think I only paid about $100 for this unit here. Um, it was just a discontinued line that the store wasn't going to be running with anymore. You can pay up to three, dollars $400 for a sub. Um, I suppose the secret is to shop around a little bit and just see what you can find. What you can do is if you make yourself up, or if you have a little cable like this with an RCA to jack, you can go around the shops and you can try different ones until you find the one that has the right right amount of thump for what uh, for what you want and then, um, then at least you know you're going to get that bass sound you know generally the design of these units are all very similar so a couple of them have switch mode transformers um, it's okay I suppose I've done a few of those as well only problem with switch modes is I had one blow up on me. I have no idea how to fix them. So, and then new new transformers can be quite expensive. So, there you go. Now, beautiful little, beautiful little box. Now we can try it now. Uh, it's got the tweeter in there. I doubt very much anything's going to come out through the tweeter because of the preamp, which is currently active inside the unit. But just give it a try and see. You never know. Turn the unit on, plug my little soft box in. Uh, we'll need to uh, plug it in the power point as well, I suppose. This for good measure. Well, the tweet is working, but there's, there's not really all that much coming out of it. Okay, so that's all working. That's all working. Um, now we have to start fiddling around with the electronics. So uh, we also need to put the vent in the back. This, this vent thing. So if we look at the back here again, I figure we'll put that probably through there. Now you also notice that since we turned it upside down, this amp is now upside down. It's no problem, we're going to take this off, we'll just turn around and screw it back on again the other way. At least that way it looks straight. So you'll need a big, big drill of some sort, a big um, hole saw, in order to, to cut a hole for that. And uh, we also need to 
take the amp out, which I'm going to do now. So, um, what's that? Just take the screws out. Like that. Now again, you'll notice, unplug it. Last screws out. And out comes the unit. Now you'll notice, we'll put this back on again, that way. Just look a bit neater, that's all. Okay, so here's your, here's your amp. So you can't be close to the subwoofer. Um, the top, top panel here, which is right behind all the uh, buttons and plugs and things at the back here, that is the current preamp, um, and that has the filtration in it that uh, filters out only the bass frequencies for the subwoofer. Uh, so we actually we want to bypass that because we don't want that to happen. We want this to give us the full range of sound and take advantage of the tweeter and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to bypass that completely and just go straight into the power amp, which is the bottom part here. And then we're going to use a mixer, and I have a little mixer that I use, uh, but any, any little mixer will do the trick, um, as it, to replace the preamp. So we're just going to have a master go straight into the power amp, and then do all the um, volume and everything like that on the mixer. So um, what we need to do is, uh, first I'm going to unplug, usually there's a little plug, that, that's the actual speakers, that you can just unplug, so that's, that's the speaker cable. And then this whole unit then comes out as you as you have a unit. Um, now you can see this this board that sticks up the top here is the uh, main amplifier. You see that there's not actually that much on it. It's a couple of capacitors. There's a uh, uh, couple of bips and bobs in there. There's, there's not a lot to it. And then you have this cable that runs from the the preamp to the main board. So we then basically need to find out which one of these cables is your, um, is your line in, basically, your, your audio signal into the amp. Now this is a mono amp, it's not stereo, because subwoofers generally work in mono. Um, so, yeah, we're going to do that in a minute. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to find what these different cables are, so we can hack into the one which is the signal. And, um, and bypass this amp. So, uh, first thing we need to do is to find ground. Okay. Now ground is usually a common, uh, common wire for everything. Um, it'll be the common that goes to the speaker, the black that goes to the speaker. Usually it's the, the surround on the circuit board, the biggest track that kind of runs around the whole thing that they've just left there, that's usually ground. Sometimes it's attached to chassis, not always mind you. So, I suppose the trick is to find ground. So, I'm going to start by putting my multimeter onto the speaker black cable. And then I'm going to put it onto the, the biggest part of the circuit board, like the biggest copper thing that runs all the way around the outside. And I'm going to measure that and see if, what kind of signal I'm getting. Got to make sure you've got a good, good contact here, so nice and, nice and tight. Press it right down into the lead there. I'm getting a little ohm reading there. Four ohms. I'll try the chassis. Just measuring my, my way around the circuit board and I basically come to the conclusion that it's pin number two there is ground. So I made myself a little chart here of all the different cables. So number two goes to ground. Um, now to find the rest of the, of the cables I'm going to need to power this unit up. Be very careful because there's high voltages in here. So um, I always use a um, protection device on my PowerPoint here, so if, if I accidentally touch something, that triggers before my heart stops, which is a good thing. Um, so I'm going to do that now. Uh, 
Okay, so now the unit is plugged in. Um, I haven't activated the safety switch yet, so there's no power in there as yet. I'm going to set my multimeter to um, voltage, because first I'm going to find out where the electricity is coming from. So I'm not going to power the unit up by pressing that down. I'm going to have a quick look. Yep, the power lamp is on, so it is now running. Now I've already decided that this is this is ground. I've got nine volts on the first pin. Zero volts in the second. Eleven volts in the fourth. Zero volts the fifth. And one and a half volt in the sixth. So we have nine volts in the first pin. So I'd say nine volts there. So that's your power in. Okay. Okay, we also have pins um, 3, 4 and 5, we have plus 11 volts and minus 11 volts. So we have 9 volts, we have ground, we have 11, we have 0 and we have plus 11. Which leads me to think that the last one in line here, which would have been my guess in the first place, is last cable, or basically cable number, number 6 going across, is our line in. So I'm going to cut that and wire a jack plug into it and that'll be our bypass to the amp. So I'll do that now. Okay, so I'm now going to test the unit and make sure that what I'm anticipating to do is going to work. So I have a, a jack out from my mixer here and I've got my clicker stomp box attached to that. So I'm going to take the earth cable and I'm just going to Attach that to the outside of the line in on the back here because that would be that would be um, ground like that. I'm going to turn this around. I said my suspicion is that it's cable number um, number six there. So I'm going to take the signal out from my jack here. I'm just going to put that on a on the pin like this so I can poke at it without uh, too much drama. Down there. There we go. As loud as you would want it. This is the signal now coming through the mixer and directly into the power amp. We're pretty much bypassing the, the preamp sub altogether. So that works fine. I'm not going to turn that off. So, everything is going along famously. So, what we need to do now is we need to wire the, the jet plug in. Uh, we need to put the, the vent in. And, and a few bits and pieces, but basically everything is going to plan so far. So, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to drill a hole and put this vent in. Uh, I'm going to drill another hole in the back panel here to put a jack plug in so we can go straight into the amp. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to drill a hole here. I've got a, a, a circular saw or a, a hole saw. Uh, sorry, not a circular saw. I've got a hole saw here in my drill, and I'm just going to drill a hole through the back here, kind of in the middle. About there. That's not going to go in like that. Just put a bit of glue around the, around the surface of it. A bit of uh, heat glue or uh, silicon or anything you want. Just so that that's a reasonably tight air seal against there. And there's your, your vent. So that's all done. Okay, so I have my hot glue gun here. And I'm just going to glue this in place. So, uh, yeah, that's all working well. I'm just going to put a a nice little bead of 
hot glue all the way around the edge here. As I said you can glue this in with silicon or build this adhesive, any, any soup glue it will be fine. I'm going to burn this after this. There's not a lot of room to play around with. There's a little bit of space on the side there. So I'm thinking I'll fit the jack plug in there. And remember this, this particular one, I'm not going to put any volume controls. I'm not going to put any fancy stuff at all. This is going to be plug it in and I'm going to control everything from the desk. So it's just straight into a power amp. If you want to put a, a volume control or a preamp or a mixer or whatever you want to build into the unit, Go for it. There's circuits uh, for that all are over the internet, so that's um, you don't need me to tell you that. Um, but if you look at my, my website, you'll find a few uh, tips and tricks and stuff like that on how you could wire this for um, for different purposes. So, but this one, I'm just going to straight into the power amp. So a jack plug that just basically hooks onto our hot wire. So I'll need my drill again. I have a, a small small drill bit that I'm just going to do a pilot hole with and then I have a like a reamer style drill bit which I'll then slowly drill it larger and larger and larger until um, the jack plug fits through so I'm just going to go in here side it up a little bit basically there Do my pilot hole first. Go in there. Now, what size do I need to go to? Here? Probably need to go to about 10, 10 mil, I suppose. I don't know if you can, if you can see this. I'll, I'll try and do this so you can see it. I'm just going through here. gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you move your way in. That fits through there. Let me see if I can take a bit of that shim off from the back here. Not so easy. Okay. Um, try and clean some of that mess off the back with a knife or something like that. That's all. Okay, so I'm going to put the jack plug through now. Take the nut off. Push it through the hole. Make sure on the back that it's not touching touching anything it shouldn't it should be sitting free and not um, none of the contacts on the back must touch the circuit board or anything that's um, going to cause problems so put the nut on tighten that up a little bit Very tight at the back here, but it's okay. So you can see the back of the plug there now. So then I'm going to solder the the chassis of the jack plug to to ground on the circuit board, and the hot, which is the pin, to the hot cable that we decided was the number number six there that runs between the two. I'm not going to have a breaker switch or anything like that. You could have it so that when you plug this in, it disconnects that. I'm just going to tap into it. It'll work fine. If you, was, if you want to be fancy, have a look on the website. There'll be some more information on how you can do different things. So, let's do that now. So, I've got some audio cable here. I'll need about that much. And then if there's a double cable, I'll need one of them. I'm going to strip the, strip the ends of the cable. The, uh, the outside shield is always ground. So. Looks like that. Looks like that. Let's get the, the inside cable. A good pair of wire. Strippers is not a bad investment either. 
I got a soldering iron, got a solder. We'll tin those first so they're nice and, and ready. And the tips of all the cables. Like that. The tin our connectors here. Make sure that the solder flows beautifully around the connector. We don't want any dry solder joints. So I'm with the hot connector. Okay. Then solder a cable on. The reason you pre tin it because it makes it so much easier to put the cable on after. In place. Get the hot cable in place. A little bit of heat on it. And there she goes. Okay, so the jack plug is now wired. Now we just got to break into our circuit board here. I probably should strip a little bit more of this so we have a bit more to play with. And I got a fair chunk actually. Oops. Like that. Now that unprotected cable there, I'm actually going to cut a bit shorter. Back to there. I'm going to tin the tip of that again. This one here that we just broke into. I'm going to tin that. I'm going to put the, the hooks from the jack plug onto the tin. Okay, so all the hooks are together. And then we just wire this to. ground on the circuit board. Make sure it doesn't touch on anything it shouldn't. Put a little bit of electrical tape around our junction there. And I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue to keep that cable away from anything. That's just to stop it touching anything it's not supposed to. Hold that while it pulls. Like that. And we've got tape. Maybe a bit of tape around the, the hot junction. And we're done. Now I just got to basically plug the speakers back in, put it back in, and test it. So, here it goes. Speaker cable. That just plugs back in. Cut it. This time we'll put it the right way up. Like that. And put all the screws back in because um, a subwoofer generates a lot of air pressure inside. So you don't want the air leaking out anywhere it's not supposed to. So don't be lazy with the screws in other words. Okay, so we have um, a door plugged in. It's up and running. The mixer is plugged into the jack that we installed. I'm just using two channels on the mixer. This is a, quite a big mixer, but you can get away with a tiny little two channel one or three channel if you have a couple of stomp boxes. Guitar is going on channel one, stomp box on channel two. Really no EQing at all, just straight through. Again, the, the microphone and the camera is not going to give a full, true representation of what this sounds like. But I'll tell you one thing, it sounds better than any any acoustic guitar amp on the market. 
So that's got a real nice deep bass sound. And uh, the guitar, you can up the treble a little bit maybe. Fairly nice acoustic sound too. Here it goes. sound quality is a concern, it's pretty damn good, as I say, probably one of the best amps you'll, you'll, uh, you'll ever have. You can improve it a little bit if you want to, get it slightly better uh, subwoofer, a bit more expensive, get a, get a proper dome tweeter maybe, rather than um, the PSO tweeters. Um, just nitpicking really, it, this is a good sounding unit, I can't imagine anybody being dissatisfied with the sound that this unit gives. And as you can see, it barely took an hour to do. So it's not really a big deal. Um, if you're going to try, good luck. Feel free to drop me an email or send me a message about how you went. Because I'd be really curious to see if anybody's actually going to go ahead and, and do this transformation to a subwoofer. Uh, I've done a few myself for friends and things like that and they're more than happy with the results. So uh, stay in touch and good luck with it. <laughs>